here from Orcus Vitae Gardens for Life. We are making a dead hedge, which is pretty much a hedge made up of dead plant material. Uh, this area in here is going to be made into a chicken run again. It has been before, but we've got a bit, bit of a plan this time. It's going to be a bit more intensive and it's going to be used for making kind of intensive quantities of compost. So smaller areas than we typically use. And we're going to divide this into three separate patches. The hedge is going to come along this edge and along here. And we're starting off with these great big logs that we've got lying around from pine trees that were here when we arrived. They're uh, breaking down really nicely. Putting down some cardboard underneath just to hold the grass back. Using the logs as a guide. And then we'll be putting some stakes in on either side of those logs. And then basically filling it in on top with dead branch material. We've got a whole lot that we cut off these sycamores here and I was originally going to put that through the chipper but I just never got around to it. So we've got several really large piles of, of uh, sycamore branches so they'll be really good. We've got a whole lot of gum branches from when we took down the tree, a uh, couple of trees um, a few weeks back. We've got a whole lot of hedge material from our cypress hedge that we've cut off ages ago that's been lying around in a big pile. So between those three different types of material, I think we'll be able to fill this in quite nicely. And uh, as we go along, we'll update you on the progress. But the idea will be that eventually, the chickens, once they get in here, they'll adore it because it'll be full of life. And then they'll kind of clear it out a bit. We'll fill it in with as much sawdust as we can get our hands on. And then we'll start throwing other garden waste in there too. And then they can scratch that up and then we'll use that as sort of an active composting system. Classic. It's meant to be, Nick. Not ideal at there. Bendy, maybe I'll put that one there to there. No, we need a bit more length, don't we? So the stuff behind me is the sycamores that we cut down from in here and they're mostly going to be cut for firewood and then these bits are the sort of top parts and that would be good firewood too but I knew we'd probably want some stakes or something so I cut a bunch of the tops off separately and then the smaller stuff on the top I was going to chuck through our tiny little chipper I never got around to it, so that's what we're using for the dead hedge. So it's kind of like, cut the sycamores down, which you can see behind me here actually. It's sort of a video all about how wonderful sycamores are really. So we cut these right back, and Pete came out every day with his little axe and chopped these down, and then I just tied his up. Stuff that we've cut off, the big stuff, that's going to be firewood. The smaller stuff, that's going to be garden stakes. And then the thinner stuff, chippings, or in this case, the dead hedge. And then it's just going to grow, all grow back again. Amazing. And really interesting too, that the stuff that wasn't cut, so the stuff that was just here from last year already, is fully leafed out. But where we've coppiced and pollarded these ones, they're quite a way behind. So it's an interesting thing and I think we can use that to our advantage because these are still weeks and weeks off casting any shade, whereas the existing growth is already casting quite a lot of shade. 
So if we have, we've got areas where we've got sycamores kind of mixed around in our garden, and so in that way we're sort of developing a bit of a kind of an agroforestry system based around the sycamores, where we can use them as living posts, as we're doing around our new chicken run area. And a renewable source of firewood, stakes, and material to go in the air. Good, pull those together, pull them at the top. I swapped this one out for a narrower one because they're too far apart. Right, oh yeah. Okay. Nicely. We've just put a few slightly larger pieces of sycamore log on there just to kind of help put a bit of weight down there. Looking quite lovely, actually. A nice curve to it. No straight lines here. section of the dead hedge here has actually got a living hedge in front of it. There's these uh, seed grown fruit trees. We've got a couple of apples. I think it goes apple. This is one apple tree here that's bent in two directions. And then there's a prunus and stitia type of plum. And then pear or, or nashi, and then another plum, and then another pear, and uh, I've basically, they were all kind of, I don't know, maybe about a metre tall when they went in, and then I've just bent them right down and tied them in place with this twine, and now you can see that they're setting up all of these upright shoots, so the branches that were bent down will stay horizontal, and all of the growth that comes off them will be vertical. And basically what it means is that at the end of this growing season when they've lost their leaves and hopefully they'll be another about another metre tall, should easily be able to do that by the end of summer, then we can bend them over again at about this sort of height and tie them down again and then they'll grow back up again and we'll do the same thing. And so. What we'll have on this side of the dead hedge is, is a living hedge that will be thick and hopefully impenetrable. And it's just these seed grown fruit trees so they didn't cost us anything and they could be a bit random in terms of their fruit production. But uh, if they're providing a, a service, uh, like a, providing a yield as a, an animal proof hedge, then any yield of fruit will just be bonus. Uh, and you know maybe it'll be the birds or the chickens that get to eat that fruit if it's not especially great and we don't like it.
So yeah, in the meantime, this will also provide a bit of structure and shelter for these seedling fruit trees. It's a good way to use seed growing trees like that because it means that even if they don't produce a good fruit you've still got a good use for them. Um, yeah and so we might even continue that around the front and other areas as well. Great place to plant some brambles too maybe. Probably a good idea to plant something that that will be kind of pruned because we'll want to keep adding to this because what will happen is that the material rots and breaks down it'll sink and then we just want to keep chopping and adding on top. So it might be good to have some things growing on it that we can actually cut back at the same time as adding to the hedge and let them grow back again. Anyway, oh, well, really nice so quite solid and stable. Just trimming the ends here so we've got a nice tidy ending. Very important that things are as tidy as possible around here. Irony. <laughs> but uh, you know we're going to be <coughs> walking in and out of here so it makes sense to have it so that we're not going to keep brushing against it. seed growing plum tree in here. This is I think maybe three years old now. It's got some pretty good growth on it. It's, it's uh, start of November. So that's going to get significantly more by the end of um, summer. Quite a nice shape to it already. We planted in here these three white currants, which is a sort of a mutant variety of the red currant. Three of them, one, two, three, and there's even some sea beet in here that seems to be coming back that we planted. It sort of struggled a little bit. I mean, lots of dock coming up, but interestingly, I mulched this area with sycamore leaves, and the central part got a much heavier dose than anywhere else. I did put sycamore leaves around the currents as well, <coughs> but it's just fascinating to see this patch here where. The leaf, leaf matter was the thickest, and like the grass just hasn't hasn't been able to make its way into here yet. So this is just sycamores from last autumn, the leaves, and uh, you know already breaking down beautifully. But it seems to be having some kind of an effect on the grasses, whether it's a uh, some kind of allelopathic type thing or I don't know really maybe just that it was thicker and it sort of smothered it out sufficiently but it's pretty impressive really so you know yet another use for sycamores so yeah oh look at you yeah, new. Petrol. look out for the I'm slightly confused that and slightly angry bumblebees why? I'm guessing because these were their homes. I think we just do put the nest over there. Yep. I'm just cutting the points of these stakes. These nice straight staves of sycamore that we've cut. And using a lovely wee Balinese machete. Or like a bill hook I suppose. The tricky thing about it is that it's only beveled on one side, so it's really just a right-handed tool, and I'm trying to use my left hand more, so it's a bit harder to, to 
I'll do with the left hand. It sort of bounces off a bit more, but it's pretty good. Nice and sharp. Nice pointy end. I really like I really like this little tool. I've got a couple of other more traditional English bill hooks, but I find they're a bit too heavy for this particular task. Whereas this one is quite nice and light, but it's got a got a bit of weight in the on the tip, so it cuts these quite nicely. And then where we've got old branch stubs coming out, they're quite easy to just trim them off. Go on the ground much more nicely. It's quite a satisfying little task. And then you only cut through to a certain point. You know, with this nice little chunks that come off the end, this is all beautiful little, like, handmade ramiel wood chip. So boutique. It's like artisanal ramiel wood chips. That stuff. Hey. So good. So we get multiple good byproducts from our sycamore. In fact, everything's a main product and a byproduct at the same time. And sycamores grow back vigorously every single year. Someone's very trusting of Puppy. <laughs> he was just licking his lap. How's it going, Nick? Snack though. I made them super sweet. Lovely. Double strawberry jam, banana mm. and peanut butter. Yeah, beautiful, thank you. Yeah, he just going dead head is going well. The gum's quite nice to work with. Got a nice big pile of it that I had stored up for just such an occasion. And I was just thinking before that, as a professionally trained arborist, that it's really nice to be using trees in this way because you don't learn anything like that. Anything like this when you're training to work in, in sort of industrial settings. It's always just chop things down and put them through chippers, basically. You know, quickest and easiest way to get rid of stuff. It's kind of like um, a little bit like how we manage water in our landscapes too. You know, stormwater engineers are all about getting the water 
it channeled as fast as possible away from where it's been collected but you know these approaches that we're using to managing trees here is, is a lot more like the the slow spread and sink that we want to be using with water so when we're cutting trees we do it in small slow steps and then process it carefully so that we've got multiple different uses of it whether it's timber or firewood or stakes or material for dead hedges like this and it's like every part of the tree can be used really carefully if you just take the time to to think about what it could be used for and find a way to use it within the landscape. We are lucky here because we've got a lot of space, we can do a lot of the stuff but something like a dead hedge would be fabulous even in a, a small garden setting I reckon and probably a really good way of actually managing vegetation within a small garden because you could just keep coppicing trees every year and, and you know planting things specifically for cutting and making into adding into your hedge. Lovely. Very cool. We've more or less finished our dead hedge. A couple of days, uh, maybe three hours at a time. Possibly not even that much actually. Just had to scrounge around for a whole lot of materials to finish it off. But we managed to find enough. It looks pretty good. We'll, we'll do a bit of trimming over the next few days. We're just kind of tucking in wee edges. Stick it out. We were discussing whether or not we should tie the tops together, which is something that is often done, but we kind of feel like we don't want to do it with like plastic or any really obviously kind of artificial material because it just looks so nice as it is. So we we'll just leave it like that for now. It also means that we can actually keep piling stuff up on top as well. I don't know, maybe we, we feel like we, we need to. We, we get some twine or something and tie it up with a bit of twine. But, uh, pretty good height all the way around. Nice and solid. And it's pretty well... I think it's pretty well impenetrable too, really. I don't really see any gaps there. But we might just need to go along and check. But you know, on the whole, that's pretty good. And we might maybe find a few extra smaller stakes and put a few kind of in so that we could tuck a bit more material in there. But it's looking pretty lovely, really. It's a bit of a transition between. Time, a lot of these gum leaves will fall off. They make fabulous soil, so that'll be really nice. And then, yeah, we'll just come along and maybe with the snippers and just trim off some of these bits that are sticking out. And same on the inside, just kind of shave it up a little around there. Could be looking pretty, pretty smart, I reckon. These sycamores here have been coppiced a bunch of times now, well pollarded actually, where we've been cutting off the tops for a couple of years. And as you can see they grow back quite slowly compared to the other sycamores which are already fully in leaf. But also underneath here, it's not quite so easy to see, but we've got a couple of aronia planted here. That's the aronia flower in there. Beautiful little little flowers. So there's a, a bush in here. 
It's being a little bit swamped by this cow parsley at the moment. And over this way here we've got a seed grown apricot, which is looking really good, really good this year. And then we've got another aronia in a seed grown plum. And kind of one of the cool things about these trees being grown from seed is that just like the sycamores, we could we can cut them at any point if we find that they are too vigorous, not producing enough fruit, getting too big for the space, creating too much shade, whatever, we can coppice or pollard them, they'll also go into the dead hedge, and then they'll grow back and we don't, we don't need to worry about losing the variety because they're not grafted, so they'll just you know, spring back from their roots. It also means that if we find down the track that they're not fruiting or whatever, we could actually graft onto them if we wanted to. Graft on an apricot, probably graft a peach on there as well even, or plum maybe. And um, same with plum, we could graft different stone fruit onto that too. So it's not just about the chickens having access to the space, it's also about these trees and that kind of ability to manage the amount of shade that they create and manage the amount of vegetation that they're producing. So that's how we like to kind of develop systems that we can interact with as well. And like the, the pollarding of these guys is great because you just need a pair of loppers to do that. So it's good to, to be doing it at that stage. Real easy to cut. It's good size material. That's all of the stuff that's around the deep edge is all being cut with loppers. Um, some of it with, with a chainsaw but um, you know it's all a really human scale kind of system and that's what we're trying to develop really.